Elizabeth Carter was a highly educated poet, historian, linguist, and translator. She was the first to translate the complete works of Epictetus, and subsequent translations were based on her initial translation. Her translation of Epictetus was published in 1752, and she later added introductions and translated fragments in 1758. From a young age, she was interested in education. Her father taught her Latin and Greek, and later French, when he sent her to live with a French family in Canterbury for a year. She was not quick to learn from her father's lessons, but she would often stay up late going through books. And this was a habit that continued throughout most of her life. Carter wrote poetry, which was first published in the Gentleman's Magazine when she was 16. And she later published a collection of her poems in 1738. Following the publication of her poems, she began her career in translating by publishing a translation of the criticism of the Pope's essay on man and Algarotti's explanation of Newton's physics. Carter became close friends with Catherine Talbot and they frequently exchanged letters. The letters Car Carter sent to Talbot were quite entertaining given her sense of humor. In one letter, she described herself as a squirrel hopping around the forest and then ended the same letter by explaining that her sister had told her she would bore the reader with her unmercifully long letter. Through Talbot, she met Dr. Secker, who helped her with her translations. Um, and she also exchanged letters with Elizabeth Montague uh, quite often. I found her views on education in only a few of her works. In the sixth stanza of her poem, Ode to Wisdom, she writes, not fortune's gem, ambition's plume, nor Cytheria's fading bloom, be objects of my prayer. Let avarice, vanity, and pride, these glittering envy toys divide, the dull rewards of care. In the following stanza, she says that she says she prefers the better gifts, which are the moral beauty of the heart and which are refined by studious thought. In a paper she had published in the Rambler, Carter describes a dream she may or may not have actually had. In the dream, she's approached by a woman dressed in all black who is called superstition. Superstition told Carter that suffering is the human condition and that this is the will of heaven. This woman departs as a second woman approaches who calls herself religion. She says she's the child of truth and the parent of benevolence, hope, and joy. Religion tells Carter about the terrible nature of superstition and asks her to look around at the beauties the world has to offer. She says that a world as beautiful as ours could not possibly be the domain of pain and suffering as superstition says. To enjoy the world God has given us is virtuous, but to consider it a source of mere pleasure is ignorance. Carter asks religion if being happy and content is as easy as being amused by the world God has created. Religion says that for a human to be truly happy, they must also make the study of God their priority. They must show good intention to their fellow creatures, and they must work hard to cultivate their own morality. Carter was interested in education as it was first shown by her late night studying as a child. She stressed the importance of educating oneself to avoid being led through life by bodily passions. And through studying, she says that a person breaks free from passions such as avarice, vanity, and pride. She did not think a person controlled by such passions could live a happy life. This is the state of humans who lack an education, according to Carter, it seems. For humans to live a happier life, they must, they must educate themselves through studying ethics, God, and God's world. In the dream she depicts, superstition led her to despair, but religion came along and sent superstition away. Religion then tells her how wonderful the world is and gave her a solution to this sad life. And I found education to be of particular interest to this project because Carter describes the uneducated person as someone controlled by the body and pleasure. And as I was researching Carter, 
I was thinking about how her views on education relate to feminist philosophy and the philosophers we've looked at so far in class. Um, I thought of Cavendish and saw some parallels between the two. Um, education was Carter's solution, and presumably she thought that this applied to women as well as men. And this wasn't something that she explicitly stated in uh, her works that I read, um, but she was highly educated and spent a lot of time studying. So I imagine that she would think other women should be as well. And, um, finding a developed philosophy in Carter's work was difficult because her most prominent works were translations with the exception of her uh, poetry, letters, and the few papers she had published in the Rambler. <clears throat> Even though she discussed education, it was difficult to interpret exactly what her thoughts were on the matter because she was not directly stating them. Um, the views that were provided in her works were either in the form of poetry, which was, I, I had a difficult time trying to uh, make my way through it and understand what she was saying, um, or in the Rambler paper, um, they were provided by characters in her stories. Um, we discussed the types of literature that was, that was acceptable for women, to, for women to write at her time um, and the unacceptableness of women voicing their opinions on certain matters also at that time. Um, and this seemed to be the case with Carter to some extent. Uh, I, was, I was picking up on some of that. Um, in a letter she wrote to, to Catherine Talbot, she asked for forgiveness for discussing her academic interests just in the one preceding paragraph, uh, which I did not find odd, um, but her apology suggests that she probably thought otherwise. Um, and the topic she discussed also led to some difficulties in interpretation. Uh, education to her was often focused on religion, um, but at the same time, she talked about um, an education um, on God's world and what God has created. She advocated for a religiously focused education, but it was more than just studying God. Uh, it seemed to me that she had a more holistic understanding of what should be studied. Uh, besides religion, she also showed an interest in studying language, geography, history, uh, music. She also had discussions in her letters on all sorts of topics with her friends, besides the ones that I just mentioned. Uh, she also talked about, uh, talked about Shakespeare um, and Epictetus quite a bit. Um, so given her other academic interests outside of religion, it seemed more appropriate to consider her views as education in general rather than just a religious education. 